Welcome everyone. In this video, I will show you how to connect any Copilot app and LLM with Epic using Fire and Model Context Protocol or MCP. I know that's a lot to unpack, but we'll take it step by step. The video builds directly on a recent post where I discussed different options for integrating Copilots with EHRs. Today, we are diving specifically into option three from that post. I'll leave a link to that post in the comments below. Now, there are two primary ways to integrate apps with EHR using Fire, a standalone app and an EHR launch. I will show you how we have implemented both workflows, but it's more fun to see how it works first. So let's jump into the demo and then we'll break down some of the details. And I'll start with the standalone app first. To make it easy to demo, we have created a launch screen that allows us to launch into different EHRs with different configurations. In the real world, the app would have all the settings pre-configured, so you would be logging in directly, but it just makes it easy as you would see. Obviously for today, we'll just be focused on Epic Sandbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and click select in here, and I have an app that is already configured in Epic and I'm going to select the scopes for launch patient and patient start dot tree. This will give us all the details we need to connect to a patient record, get the data and then chat with it. So I'm just going to copy the URL from here because I want to be able to come back to this screen to show other settings and I'm just going to go ahead and launch it in a new browser. What you will see from here is basically any standalone app logging into Epic. There should be nothing new in here that you have seen with any Fire application. So I'm logged in. I am on Anna's record. I can go ahead and actually look at the all data tab in here where I will pull in all the data as Fire, but that's not really what we are interested in today. I'm going to go to this co-pilot tab. This is where all the new stuff happens. So Right now you can see that there is, it's saying that there are no recent AI consultations. So we are calling chats basically an AI consultation so that we can actually keep it as part of the patient's record. So I'm going to just go and say that I want to start a new AI consult and I'm going to just go ahead and click on it. I'll come back to how we configure the models and other thing, but right now I'm just using GPT-40. So I'm going to go in here and just ask it a very simple question. How old is the patient? So what happened basically back in here is, is that the co-pilot is using MCP to connect to the fire data and conversing basically in a natural language. So it's not too much, like not, nothing great happening in here, but what is important here is to show this that it's actually using some tools. And we covered a lot of this MCP details in other videos. Uh, what I want to try and really here is to take it one step further. So I'm going to ask it another question. What are the guidelines for prescribing ibuprofen for this patient? So what you will see in here is, is that we have configured it with a system prompt to say that unless you have any specific guidelines specified for the organization, clarify that, but you can still use your general knowledge uh, for to answer that. So it actually says it in here. I could not directly retrieve any specific guidelines, but generally for a 41 year old. So it has that context. I don't have to tell that, you know, again, uh, these are the basically the guidelines. Now, what I can do is I have configured like a RAG MCP server in here. So I can actually say that I want you to use that particular source. I will add that and then I'm going to ask the same question again. What are the guidelines for prescribing ibuprofen for this patient? And what you will notice in here is that it's actually used a different uh, tool this time. And we are going to look at the tools and how it works behind the scenes. And it's actually going to tell me that for a 41 year old patient, the guidelines are as follows. Uh, and actually gives me a link to a particular document that I have uploaded. So I can actually go in there and see that document that has been uploaded for this particular organization where it shows me what the specific guidelines are. So this is a very, very simple example of a co-pilot that is using an LLM that is working with an EHR only using fire data. Now, 
everything that we have seen that can be done from chatbots where we have to take the patient data and copy it there can be accomplished in here. I can go on and on, but let's take a look at kind of how this is all happening behind the scenes. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint and I'm going to kind of give you an overview kind of how it is configured. So what we have here is basically a chat app that is configured with an LLM, uh, which is communicating through an MCP server. So we have our big MCP server, but that MCP server is ultimately connected to multiple MCP servers. Uh, there is one MCP server that is using it as a data connector. So that's an MCP server for fire which is actually then making all the connections where when I ask it, what's the patient age, it knows basically how to convert it to a query and it returns the data. There is another MCP server that is connected to a RAG resource. So it knows how to basically pull the data. And then this MCP server knows how to actually chain different tools across basically different MCP servers. There can be other MCP servers where we can actually connect PubMed or other resources that can be brought in or build any of the clinical tools. Ultimately, the idea being that all of those MCP servers can be brought into chatting with the EHR as easy as a normal conversation. One of the other things that we are looking into also is that not everything can be answered with the chat. So we can also embed forms and apps directly into the chat interface, something that I'll cover in a future video. Again, to basically just go behind the scenes a little more from a technical perspective. So again, this is the overview from the post that I had shared about the four options. And as I said, we are talking really about this option three where the EHR's fire server is being used through the MCP server to connect and basically make this chat interface available. So how are we actually doing it? Because obviously there is no way in Epic to do that. So what we have actually done is that because there is no currently way to configure the MCP servers in anything in EHR or for any uh, in Epic or any EHR, uh, we actually build a layer in between which we call a workspace where we can go and configure all the settings. Uh, the workspace also has a fire interface that allows us to basically connect to that EHR. And then we also basically make it just simple to pass the query. So it's acting like a proxy server to that fire server to the Apex fire server, managing all the configurations in there. Now, one of the key points in here is, as you notice, we are also saving all the chat conversations. So the workspace itself has a database too. Now, if the EHR basically supports saving those conversations, it can be pushed back. But if it doesn't, then you know we, we basically save the, the conversations in the workspace itself. So this is just one way kind of to implement it. I mean, we are sure that as the market matures, EHRs might support this out of the box or might support some functionalities. But once you have that workspace in between, uh, the rest of the workflow just goes in there where we have different MCP servers and all of them are now configured and you can keep adding more and more MCP servers to build more functionality to the chat app. I can actually show you a little bit of this configuration, how it is done in the application. So let's go back to the application now. Okay, so we are back in the application. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and show you some of the configurations in here. So I'm going to start with the AI settings. So this is the workspace that we were connecting to. And as you can see, like, you know, we have some models configured in there. So uh, we are currently using Azure Foundry, but this can use any model. So we are also kind of working on Gemini and some of the other models. Uh, I have also configured some vector stores in here. So again, it can be configured into Azure AI search, but I'm actually running a quadrant vector database locally. And that is kind of what becomes available through an MCP server for searching. And you can see I had a very simple document, a single document that I had just created and uploaded for testing. Uh, but this can be like thousands of documents or whatever way you want to make those guidelines available, or it can even point to an existing vector database. Uh, that the organization had that can then be made available through that chat. Again, this is all configured outside the EHR. So this is kind of, again, the very basic settings. Um, I do want to point out a couple other uh, resources that is important for setting like this. So one is 
how are we actually saving the data so this is a open discussion that we had on the chat fire is to say what is the right way to save um, communications with ai and we are using the communication resource so i'll put a link to this post too where we have discussed kind of how we are doing it and last but not the least i also want to show how we can actually do the entire workflow that we did using an ehr launch so what we did so far was that we actually launched into an app that was outside the ehr where the clinician had to select the patient and that might not sometimes be the best workflow if you're already in the patient chart so what you can also do is use ehr launch so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in here and i'm going to copy the ehr launch url and i'm going to go into epic so epic doesn't provide you like a direct sandbox where you can like test the ehr launch but they do provide a nice harness uh, to kind of use that from their documentation. So it's called here launching your app from Epic. So what I can do in here is I can just click on the try it button in here. I'm going to select one of my app. I'm going to select the same patient and then I'm going to copy paste the URL that is running locally on my machine. And you can assume that this is similar to if you are in a patient chart in Epic and you have configured an app, there will be a tab that appears and that tab will launch what we will launch in here. So I'm just gonna say generate the launch URL, copy to clipboard. Again, you won't be doing this from Epic, you will just be clicking on the button. Uh, but now if I go into a different browser and I just copy that URL in here, uh, you will see it will be a very similar experience but this time i didn't have to select the patient i didn't have to log in i came straight from epic but if i go into the copilot again you'll see the chat that we just had there is available uh, and i can just continue from there or i can start a new consult so that was a very quick walkthrough of how we are implementing integrating copilots with ehrs we showed it with epic but this can be done with sona this can be done with any ehr or fire uh, server uh, we will be doing deep dives into each of the steps that I showed here today. Uh, we are still working on this and looking to collaborate with anyone that is interested. I would like to share another resource if you are interested in collaborating with us. We have been publishing uh, a lot of our uh, specs. So if I can go to Sharp on MCP. So this is a place where we are sharing how we have kind of designed this, how we have designed the MCP servers. Uh, looking to looking for any feedback that anyone has or to collaborate on it thank you so much for watching